My name is Jason and this is Just Watches. Okay, today we have my first watch from Ferrer on the channel, and this is a brand I've wanted to check out for a while. I've always been intrigued by their fantastic use of color, and I've heard they are very high quality watches. I was able to borrow one for review, and I see why they are so well liked. Today we have their split second flyback chronograph, the Ansdale. From the Ferrer website, this watch was named after Ansdale Beach, England, the location where on March 16th, 1926, racing legend Sir Henry Seagrave broke the world land speed record while driving Ladybird, a four liter Sunbeam Tiger car, reaching a top speed of 152 miles per hour. So, quite the backstory for the name of this particular model. But before we get into the review, as always, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. So as of this recording, this watch is currently available on the Fair website with an MSRP of $625. And starting with the case, it's 39.5 millimeters in diameter. It's only 45 millimeters lug to lug. It's quite thin at 11 millimeters, and then it has a 20 millimeter lug width opening. Now, considering how tall this boxed sapphire crystal is, the case is very thin. The sides are nicely brushed, as is the top of the lugs. There's a large high polished bezel that nicely visually breaks up the case from the side, almost acting as a mid case between the crystal and the lower section of the case of the watch. The lugs are quite straight, but due to that very short lug to lug length, the watch still wears very comfortably. The three pushers are high polished to kind of counterbalance the brushing of the case and reside very snug and close to the case. Overall, this case has a very sleek design. Now, unfortunately, this is not the stock strap that comes with the watch, so I can't review that aspect. This is a really nice rally style Gakota strap. And overall, I've been impressed with that brand. They make some really nice aftermarket straps for watches. The case back is held down with four screws and is high polish. It has a cool design and the fairer brand name, but being all high polish, it's gonna pick up scratches very easily. You can see that this one already has a fair amount of wear. So the movement of this watch is definitely one of the highlights. This is the Swiss made ETA 251.294 Power Drive Precision. This is a quartz split second chronograph, which is an incredibly fancy and expensive movement in the world of mechanical watches, but you can get the same functionality for much, much less in a quartz movement. So starting at the 10 o'clock sub register, we have a 30 minute totalizer. And then a 10th of a second sub register is at two o'clock. When you start the chronograph, the large central chronograph second hand begins to tick. If you hit the button again, it stops. Normal chronograph functionality. However, this is where the magic of the split second comes in. If the chrono is running and you hit the pusher at 10, a second chronograph hand reveals itself and continues to time while the first chronograph hand stops. In this way, you can time multiple durations of time that have passed from the same starting point. You can also hit the 10 o'clock pusher again to rejoin the hands after taking note of the first time position, and then the chronograph is ready to split time again. It also has a flyback function, so when you want to restart the chrono, you don't have to stop it first, and it will immediately restart if you use this flyback feature. As if this wasn't enough, the watch also has a jumping hour in the first position, so you can easily change the time if you travel without resetting the time of the watch entirely. You do give up the quick set date in this configuration, but on a quartz watch, it is much less of an issue. Now, the movement does hack if you pull the crown all the way out so you can precisely set the time. The watch also lets you reposition all of the chronograph hands in the event they become misaligned. Finally, the movement has a 72 month battery life, which is quite long, and it does have a low battery indicator where the second hand will jump once every four seconds to let you know it's time to replace the battery. The 5.5 millimeter push-pull crown is very interesting in the fact that it's made of bronze. This is a playful feature that appears to be present on many fair watches. It is also signed. It is a touch thin in profile, but since this is a quartz watch, you won't have to adjust the time or date very often. The crystal is a gorgeous boxed sapphire. This gives the vintage feel of a domed acrylic crystal with none of the worrying of scratching it. There's no mention of AR coating, but it seems to me that some has been used here. I just love looking at this crystal from the side angles of this watch. The dial is a gorgeous shade of matte blue. The three recessed sub-registers contain concentric circles and also have a sunburst effect. This in combination with all of the colors used in the design makes the dial very eye-catching. Starting at the very edge of the dial, there is a white circle all the way around the edge with five minute designations in orange. You almost can't even notice this unless you view the watch at an angle since the domed crystal obscures this feature. There is also then a half railroad track with dashes for each of the minutes. 
months. Arabic numerals mark out the hours and are loomed. Fair Universal is tucked at the top of the dial with chronograph and flyback near the four o'clock date window. The date wheel is color matched, which is great attention to detail. I'm not a huge fan of the date on this watch as it deletes the four numeral, but a date on a watch always makes it more practical. Finally, Swiss made flanks the six o'clock position where the six has been severed right in half by the running seconds sub register and actually looks like a little U. That is my main complaint on the dial is the extremely heavily clipped numerals at 10, two and six. I wonder if it would have been better to leave these numerals off entirely, like with the four o'clock position. There are actually seven hands on this watch. The hour and minute hands are a syringe style and filled with loom in two sections. The minute hand is plenty long, terminating at the edge of the dial. The chronograph seconds hand is a striking yellow, while the hands of the sub registers are a playful orange that match the five minute designations at the very edge of the dial. Finally, hiding away under the main chronograph seconds hand is the split second chronograph hand, which is silver. The silver hand can be a touch hard to see against all of these other colors, but I don't know if they would have been able to sneak another color into this already very colorful design. The loom is adequate. It's not as bright as the Seiko on the right here, but it does serve its purpose. At only 45 millimeters lug to lug and only 11 millimeters thick, this is a very comfortable watch to wear. You can also see it wears nice and snug against the wrist. So pros and cons, starting with the pros. Well, Fair offers a five-year movement guarantee, which is really nice peace of mind when you're spending this much money on a watch. Second, I love the boxed sapphire crystal. It adds a ton of charm. Third, the movement is really interesting. Not only does it have the split second functionality, but it also has that jumping hour hand. So if you do change time zones, you can change the time without stopping the overall watch. And last, this is just a beautiful colorway. Fair always gets away with adding what seems like one more color than should be possible, but all the results are really beautiful and interesting. Interesting. As for cons, while it's minor, I mentioned before, I don't like the clipped numerals on the dial. They somewhat bother me. Second, I'm not really a fan of high polished case backs as they're bound to get thrashed. And then finally, the pushers aren't super satisfying to activate, but that is pretty typical with a quartz chronograph. So the overall quality of this watch is high. I'm impressed for sure. And I definitely want to check out more fares on the channel if I get the opportunity. Now, is this particular one worth the money? $625 is quite a bit to pay for a quartz chronograph chronograph, but this isn't any typical quartz chronograph, is it? You have a very special split second quartz functionality. And I think that in is in of itself will be the deciding factor for most people. Do you want or need a split second chronograph and don't want to spend a fortune on a mechanical version? Well, then Ferrer has you covered with this beautiful watch and a very nice five-year warranty. However, if you don't want or need that split second functionality, there's a wide selection of other quartz chronographs for less than half the price. So there we have it, the Fair Ansdale with split second flyback chronograph functionality. What do you guys think of this watch? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you're enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all for this time. My name is Jason and you have been watching Just Watch.